In this lesson, we're going to go through composition of mixtures. So let's start by defining a mixture. A mixture contains more than one pure substance. So salt water, for example, contains sodium chloride and H2O water. Um, they have variable compositions depending on the pure substances they contain and the relative amounts of those substances. Okay, so let's take a look at some particle diagrams. So here we have four different particle diagrams. And if you look at the top, it says the green dots represent atoms of element X and the white dots represent atoms of element Z. So the first one, the first particle diagram, particle diagram A, um, is a mixture. So A is a mixture of two elements. So we've got a bunch of green dots. So those are element X. And we have a bunch of white dots, but notice there's two of them together. So we can represent those by calling those Z, and then we'll give them a subscript two because there's two of atom element Zs in each molecule. All right, let's take a look at B. So B, they're all the same. It's all one, element X and two element Z's. So this is a pure substance. And it's just gonna be a compound. So we have one X, two Z's. So one X and then two Z's. C is also a pure substance. If you notice, they're all two white dots put together. So this is also a pure substance. It's a diatomic element. That means that it's always got a buddy. So you'll never see one of those atoms by themselves. So let's see, this is gonna be Z2. All right, D. D is a mixture. We have the element X and then we have a compound here that is 1X and 2Zs. Okay, now I want you to notice that A and D are different. So A is a mixture of two elements because I have just green dots by themselves and then I have um, white dots together in a compound, but it's still, the things that are put together are still Z. Okay, so those are all elements. D, we have element X by itself, and then we have a compound that consists of both X and Z. Okay, so I want you to notice that important difference. Okay. So since we're dealing with mixtures, we use a technique called elemental analysis. And elemental analysis is finding the relative mass of one or more elements in the mixture. So we use this to determine the purity of a substance. So let's look at our first example here. It says a 3.9 gram sample of a mixture of magnesium fluoride that's MGF, and calcium chloride, CaCl2, is found to contain 0 0.24 grams of calcium. What percent of the sample is calcium chloride? Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how many moles of calcium we have. Okay, so let's do that. So step one, um, determine moles of calcium. Okay, so let's do that. So we have 0 0.24 grams of calcium. And let's look up the molar mass on the periodic table. It's 40 point, I believe it's 0 0.03 grams of calcium. And that's how many grams are in one mole of calcium. 
when we do the math here, we're going to end up with 0 0.0060 moles of calcium. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine the moles of calcium chloride. So if you look, oops, if you look here, we have one mole of calcium for every one mole of our calcium chloride. We don't really need to do the calculations here because it's one to one, but I'm going to write it out anyway. Okay, so we have 0 0.0060 moles of calcium. And in our compound, calcium chloride, for every one mole of calcium chloride, Sorry, one mole of calcium, we have one mole of calcium chloride. So we're going to end up with the same number. But we're going to be in units of calcium chloride. Okay. So the reason we did that is because we have calcium here, and we know that our mixture contains both magnesium fluoride and calcium chloride. So You'll see why we did this here in just a second. So we have our moles of calcium chloride. Now we need to figure out the mass of calcium chloride. Okay. So um, determine mass. Of calcium chloride. Okay. So let's take our moles. And let's multiply it by the molar mass, of course. So one mole of calcium chloride contains 110.98 grams of calcium chloride. Okay, so when we do the math here, we end up with 0 0.66588 grams of calcium chloride. Okay, so that's how many grams of our sample our calcium chloride, but that's not what the question's asking for. The question's asking for the percent, okay? So what percent of our 3.9 gram sample is calcium chloride? So we're gonna do the part over the whole, I'm kind of running out of space here, so let's do 0 0.66588 grams. That's how many grams of calcium chloride we have and we need the grams of our sample, which is 3.9 grams sample. And to get a nice clean percent, let's multiply that by 100. So it's the part over the whole times 100. And when we do that, we end up with about 17%. So about 17% of our sample, our 3.9 gram sample, is calcium chloride. Okay, here's another example. This looks really complicated, but just, just bear with me for a second. So example two reads, the mass percent of carbon in pure glucose, that's C6H12O6, is 40%. A chemist analyzes an impure sample of glucose and determines that the mass percent of carbon is 38.2%. Which of the following impurities could account for the new low mass percent of carbon in the sample. Okay, so let's look at our choices here. So water is just H2O, no carbon. Um, B, C, and D all contain carbon. So as I said, this one looks really complicated, but if you look, water doesn't have any carbon. So because our um, percent of carbon went down, we went from 40% to 38.2%, that means that the amount of carbon went down. So if we're adding something that has less or has no carbon, that would cause the percent carbon to go down. So since water doesn't contain any carbon, there's your answer right there. If we added water, it's going to cause the overall mass percent to go down because we're adding stuff. We're increasing the overall mass, 
but what we're adding doesn't contain any carbon, so the overall amount of carbon. All right, let's take a look at our third example. It says a student analyzes a two gram sample of a mixture of copper and aluminum by reacting the copper with nitric acid, as represented in the equation below. The student determines that the reaction produces 0 0.01 moles of copper nitrate. Assuming that all the copper in the mixture reacted completely, what was the percent of copper by mass in the two gram sample of the mixture? All right, so in the question, we know that we're dealing with a two gram sample and we have 0 0.010 moles of our copper nitrate. Okay, so kind of like what we did with the first one, we're going to start by turning our moles into grams. So determine moles of copper in the product, which is CuNO3 2 uh, product. Okay, so we know that we have uh, 0 0.010 moles of our product. of Cu and O3, uh, 2. All right, now in our product, we know that there is one mole of copper for every one mole of our product. Okay, so for every one mole of copper nitrate, we have one mole of copper. So we'll obviously end up with the same number here, but we're gonna be in units of copper. Um, step two, let's take those moles and let's turn them into grams. So determine the mass of copper. So 0 0.010 moles of copper, and let's turn that into grams. So for every one mole of copper, Copper has a molar mass of around 64. Okay, so we'll end up with 0 0.64 mole. Oops, sorry. Nope, we converted. This is going to be grams of copper. And if we go back to the question, we know that it's a 2 gram sample. So now we need to determine the percent of copper in the mixture. Percent of copper in mixture. So we had 0 0.64 grams of copper and the mixture was two grams. To get a nice clean percent, let's multiply that by 100. So we end up with 32%. So we're kind of approaching all of these problems the same. We need to isolate what the question's asking for. In this case, it was copper. And then we just do the mass of whatever it was asking for over the mass of the sample. And that is how to figure out our elemental analysis type problems that you might see on the AP test.